This is an insane underutilized feature in NAN. Businesses, when I work with them, are always asking how can they add human approval into their workflows because they don't fully trust AI. And I'm the same, my AI isn't perfect. Today, we're gonna to show you exactly how to set up a workflow and get human approval at several stages when drafting an email. Before we get into the workflow, let me show you exactly how this works. So we've got an email just about to hit our inbox and it's somebody asking a question about the community and how they can get more involved. So we're gonna send that right away. Great, so that's hit our inbox now. We've seen that come in. Now our AI in the background is replying or drafting a reply to this, but we don't fully trust it. So what we're gonna do is add a human approval stage in the middle. So we've gone into the workflow in NAN and we can see from the execution history that we're waiting human approval. So the email has been received and that's been acknowledged by NAN. We've then used an AI node to draft an email reply, but we're not 100% confident. So we sent it to our human support team so that they can approve or decline the message. And this is how it appears in the support team's message. So we've got an opening message here that we've got an email for you. What do you think? And you can see the drafted out message on screen from the AI. And we have a choice here as a human support agent. Do we want to decline it or approve it? And then we take actions based on decline or approve. So we're going to hit approve here and see exactly what happens. So we get a, a page that confirms our approval. And then if we go back to the workflow, and we refresh the execution, you can see that because the human approved the flow, it's now sent that reply, which is pretty cool. And you can see it sent the exact reply that the AI had drafted. So because the humans approved it, it's then sent that, and we've received that back in our mailbox. So if you stick around to the end, we're gonna talk through how your human operator can provide feedback so that AI can iteratively update this email and we send the perfect email at the end. The first node we have is a receive email trigger. So what we're doing is monitoring scrapes.ai email, and we're polling that every minute for new emails, much like you would with an email manager. We're looking for messages received, and then this is really critical. We've got in the filters, search minus from me, and this is just a Gmail filter to make sure that we're not receiving our own draft responses. Inside the LLM, we have a very simple prompt. So just the general things you have for crafting an email response. You can see then in the inputs, we are passing through the subject. We've then passed through the message. So you just drag and drop those in. And then we'll touch on this later, but right now we're not including any feedback to iterate and update the flow because we're simply approving or declining the message that it crafts. So now we're coming on to the underutilized feature which is the crux of this workflow, which is the human approval stage. And right now I'm using Gmail for this send and wait message, but you can connect it to a lot of different systems and this should be accessible in your NAN environment. All you need to do is go to the relevant service like Gmail, and then you will see a send message and wait for response. And that is our human in the loop or human approval node. You can see up here, you can see up here in the human in the loop nodes that we've got various different programs that we can actually use this send and wait for approval. We've got Slack, we've got Google Chat, Outlook, email, Telegram, and Gmail. Today we're going to demonstrate Gmail, but the other nodes work exactly the same. So you can connect it to the service that you use and still use this workflow. So we'll jump into the human approval node here. So this is just a Gmail node and we are pulling the message resource. And in the operation, we're just going down to send and wait for response. And all that's going to do is make sure that we have a human on the other end of our email, approve or decline the message that we've crafted and give a response there. And it's going to sit like a wait node until that response is given by the human. Therefore, it gives the power to a support team or any other operations team, rather than leaving the responses all to AI when they are not perfect. This just gives the power back to the support team and they can actually have the final say 
because as you know, when an AI node writes an email, it's not always perfect. So you might want that extra step, extra set of approvals before the email is sent back to the customer. In particular, perhaps for urgent emails or particularly distressed customers, you might implement, implement this workflow. So you can see as the inputs for this, we have the draft email reply, and we're adding that in here because we want the user to be able to see exactly what the email was replying to. And in our case, all they're doing is accepting or declining the email response. We've then got response type. So first we're gonna look at approval, but we also have free text and custom form, which are both really useful options. We'll touch on free text later because that's how you provide feedback. So we've added some options here on type of approval. We can go for approve only or prove and disprove. So we've gone for approve and disprove. And then we just choose some styling around the buttons. And then we also have the option to limit the wait time. So this will continue waiting indefinitely and the execution will continue unless we set this limit type of after time interval or at a specified time. Mm -hmm. So we've just set it to 45 minutes as the default to wait for 45 minutes. If nothing's answered by then, then it will go through to our fallback option. And this is exactly what the email would look like if it went to a human operator. So we've got, we've written an email for you. What do you think? And then we've got the full draft here. And as the operator, I'm there to approve or decline that. And the action I take of approve or decline then determines the next steps in the flow. So if we jump back to the flow, we've then got a human feedback node, which is just a switch node that pulls the data from the response of the human operator and says, is approved true or is approved false? If it's true, then we know that we're gonna take an action that's positive towards the customer, like sending a reply directly. If it's not true, then we know that the human might want to craft the response to the customer and therefore we take a different action. With these switch nodes, it's always a good option to have a fallback and by default, if we're being conservative, we probably want to choose the option of output denied as a fallback option. So say the 45 minutes ran out, then we wouldn't automatically send the email. We'd actually want to stop that email from being sent and let a human operator draft the reply instead. So in this example, we approved the response and it's then gone through and actually just then sent the reply. So the human had the power to decline that and make sure that that email wasn't sent, but because they were happy with that, they hit approve and the email sent. Okay, so we've covered how to approve or decline an email through human approval, but actually in a real business use case, what you'd probably want is to give feedback on that approval and iterate with the AI rather than just having it black and white, yes or no. We actually just want the AI to iterate based on our feedback. So that's what we're gonna show you now. So this is the part of human feedback. So I've set up a version down below that's got a few more nodes in, but this time allows the human to give feedback and our AI will then iterate on the feedback. So the difference between this flow and the above flow, we're still monitoring our inbox. We are creating a draft email exactly as we were before, but what we now need to do is effectively consider two input sources. So we've got the original draft email, which will be the first input to our human feedback. So we'll, we'll send the original draft to our operator to give feedback on that. But what happens if they come back and they say, okay, update the pricing, update these details, then we have to consider, then we have to consider that there will be a second input or continuous inputs until the AI node gets it right. So what we've done is we've added this set node and what that allows us to do is effectively just pull in the email whether it's the original email or the revised email, and then send it for our human feedback. So it goes through a loop until the human is happy effectively. So both the draft email reply and the revised email reply will set it as text in the output. So what we've done is just in our set email, we've just pulled json.txt, and that's because the input can come from our revised email or it can come from our draft email. Both would be considered the same and therefore be passed into our next step. And this is what the template looks like. So again, we've got this approval email, but this time we have a chance to respond rather than approve or decline. So we can actually give it detailed feedback. What we're gonna do is just ask it to talk more 
about our live networking sessions. So we'll open that up here and you can see this is a nice web interface where somebody who's receiving the email will come in here and actually give their feedback points. And then we can send off the feedback around talking about the live networking sessions. So if we jump back into the flow, I've now done a two way conversation with the AI. So in the first one you saw, we made sure that we denied and asked for changes. And then in the second one, I acknowledged that the email was good enough and it then followed the second path. So we'll run through those scenarios now. The first thing we are doing after the human feedback is classifying our text. So we've got two categories here. We've got approved and we've got denied. And we've given some simple explanations. What text signifies that it would be an approved email? So we'd say approved, all good, good to go. Things similar to that would be classed as approved. And you can see our second run round here, our input text as a human operator was good to go. And then the other pathway that's going to force it to force the AI to revise our reply is if it's denied. So this feedback suggests the email needs update or changes. And again, we've put some phrases that might suggest that. And you can see in our original pathway, when we typed in, we wanted to talk more about live networking events. It's actually treated that as denied and pushed it to draft the second email, which is the correct pathway. So it's followed this denied email path, and then it gets passed to another LLM chain. Inside this LLM chain, we are passing it the context of the original email. We're also passing it the original response that we drafted because what we're actually trying to do is improve on that response. And then we also pass the human operator feedback. Inside the system prompt, we've told it to analyze and improve on the email by taking the context that we just mentioned and match the tone and intent, unless we've asked that to be changed, but generate an improved response based on that. And this is what it's come up with. So based on the feedback of talk more about live networking events, you can see immediately it's got to get more involved. I highly recommend participating in our live networking events. So it's taken on board the feedback and drafted a friendly response, which it's then followed around the loop to become our email that's sent for human feedback. So you can see how this is an iterative process where you could have a team of human operators who are approving or revising in a team with the AI, really, really powerful. On the second go round the loop, we decided that the email was good enough. So I responded with good to go, and that's been passed in and confirmed and classified as good to go. And we've used the open router Gemini model here just because it's really quick at classifying short pieces of text. That's then followed the approved branch, which has forced it to go through the send reply node. And you can see that we've actually sent a reply containing that new email information, but the reply was only sent after our human had approved it. So you can see how this can be a really powerful combination. And actually you can work iteratively and teams can work iteratively with AI to improve the outputs together. It's a really underutilized feature. And as I mentioned, you've got all of these human in the loop nodes that you can actually use right now inside NAN. You've just got to go and find them by hitting the plus icon and typing in any of these nodes and it's the send and wait for response. Now, if you want this exact template, then check out school.com forward slash scrapes. Thanks so much for watching.